What's going on, everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel, MCU, and, of course, Spider-Man No Way Home. And today we have some details about the film and some very, very interesting leaks. These are somewhat unique to what we've heard recently. And if one of these in particular happens to be true, it kind of explains what Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel characters is actually doing with Venom and Morbius and why the Daily Bugle is the exact same Daily Bugle from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man universe. And there is just a whole dump of leaks on the internet right now from people claiming to have addition for the movie, therefore know a little bit about a certain scene. Others claiming that they know somebody close to Marvel Studios or Sony and they heard a little bit about the film. And if one of these ends up being true, we also know a little bit more about the relationship between Sony and Marvel and the control that Marvel has over Spider-Man, which is always a great thing because Marvel knows what they're doing. So there is a ton to dive into today, but before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest Spider-Man videos. So we'll start off by a pretty decent, credible source. The Twitter account Superhero Theorist seems to know a lot of the plot of Spider-Man No Way Home, at least that's what this person is claiming. This person is of Murphy'sMultiverse.com and they have a pretty good reputation with the scoops and the leaks that they do put out there into the public. And based off of some of their recent tweets, we learn a little bit about the film. One of them is another confirmation of the main villain of the film. And the account that originally tweets this, the Marvel Sheriff, makes a pretty good point. He says, Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn is in this movie. I'm having a hard time believing Daniel RPK, Charles Murphy, the Illuminati, Collider, and KC Walsh all collectively got false information about him being in the movie. There's no denying it at this point. He's as good as confirmed in my book. And then Charles Murphy of Murphy's Multiverse quote tweeted it saying, he is. Now I start by this and mention it because this is actually a very valid point. All of these scoopers mentioned have been right about many different scoops in the past. Even if they're not 100% correct on everything they've put out, nobody really is. But these people do have decent track records. And Collider is a huge trade company. They always interview people like Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige, all of the actors for whatever movie or show was coming up. So they have a pretty good relationship with Marvel Studios, Disney, etc, etc. Them combined with these other scoopers who have good track records, I would also say that it's pretty much confirmed that Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn is indeed going to be the main villain of this film. But then we get a comment about the multiverse. One person tweeted, the fact that we are going to see these two finally interact gets me so hyped, talking about Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin slash Norman Osborn and Doc Ock. In which superhero theorist replied, the film really is a love letter to Spider-Man fans, specifically to Raimi and the amazing Spider-Man fans. Somebody else went on to ask, would you say it's more of a love letter to those Spider-Man or all of them, including Tom's Spider-Man? In which they replied, I mean, everyone really, but maybe Raimi and the amazing Spider-Man fans will have the most fun with it. Now, to me, this is really great news because it tells me two things. One is that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man from the Sam Raimi universe and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man from the Amazing Spider-Man universe aren't just going to be quick little five minute, six minute, seven, whatever minute cameos. They're not just going to pop up on the screen for a second in one of Doctor Strange's portals and then go away. Although I'm sure fans would still be pretty excited about that, even just to see them in the movie. But it seems like these characters and the characters from their universes are are actually going to be pretty involved. Another thing that this tells me is that the leaks that we've been hearing about the Sinister Six forming of villains from other universes is most likely true as well. And it really sounds like it's going to be just an awesome combination of all three different Spider-Man universes. Now, these are pretty much details out there about the movie, but like I mentioned in the beginning, we do have some leaks and they are pretty interesting. The first one is about Spider-Man No Way Home, Venom, and Morbius, essentially the SPUMC and how it connects to the MCU Spider-Man. This leak states that the Venom and Morbius movies are actually an alternate version of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. This explains why the Daily Bugle logo is exactly the same as in the Raimi movies. In this universe, Spider-Man 3 hasn't happened yet. Spider-Man hasn't met Venom or Eddie Brock. Another difference is that in this universe, Norman Osborn never died. And what exactly happened to him after the fight with Spider-Man, I have no idea. This is just what I was told. As for Doc Ock, it's pretty much what Alfred Molina said, that his character's story picked up right after he fell into the water. 
Now this is a very, very interesting thought, and I would actually really commend Sony if this is truly what they're doing. This kind of takes a lot of planning in advance. However, they have been working with Marvel Studios for a while now, ever since Civil War, so it really wouldn't surprise me at all if Sony and Marvel and Disney were all working together to create this huge universe, or kind of two different universes. Because they definitely thrive off of the success of one another. Sony thrives more off of the success of Marvel, obviously but it's really beneficial to Marvel if Sony films like Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage and Morbius do well and connect. And we have seen the original Daily Bugle logo in Venom Let There Be Carnage and we've even seen it in some leaked photos for Morbius. So there is clearly a connection here, especially when you consider we have the same JJJ, J. Jonah Jameson, in Spider-Man Far From Home in the end credits and he's going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. This could be yet another alternate version. So to me, this makes a lot of sense. And even though I did personally enjoy Spider-Man 3, I know there are a lot of people out there who didn't and would rather have that movie kind of erased. Also, I'd like to point out that if this leak is true, Harry Osborn is still alive and has not died because they said Spider-Man 3 has not happened yet. And I would personally love for a James Franco cameo in Spider-Man No Way Home, but I'm not getting my hopes up. This next leak comes from somebody who claims to have auditioned for a role in Spider-Man No Way Home and didn't get it, but one of his friends friends did, and that role was the role of a juror. This leak says, I tried out for the jury in No Way Home, didn't get the part, but his best friend persisted and was cast as a juror and saw a certain blind man representing Tom, as well as separate shots mentioning She-Hulk in case DD rights, as in Daredevil, weren't cleared, but it seems Daredevil scenes will be used without a doubt. Didn't see a costume, but he was a dang good lawyer. Now, this kind of lines up with what we've heard before, and it's kind of the same situation as Norman Osborn. Enough trade companies have reported that Matt Murdock is going to be in the movie that I'm really expecting it at this point. It's not confirmed by any means, but it just seems to make sense and would be really, really cool to see. He's a lawyer in New York. He's a superhero on the side, but they don't reveal that he's a superhero, but it would make sense that he would want to defend another superhero. And literally every report that we have states that it's not Daredevil showing up, but Matt Murdock. He's not going to be donning his costume. He's simply going to be a lawyer. Now, this next leak is very interesting because it talks about the relationship between Sony and Marvel Studios. And of course, we always Always want to know what's going on with these guys. And what's posted actually seems pretty legitimate. This person claims that they're an affiliation in some way with a toy manufacturer. So working for a big toy company. And this person says, so basically I've been hearing rumors that Marvel has more control over the Spider-Man No Way Home film and I can in fact confirm that. Usually, for the previous films, me and my boss would have around a three-hour meeting with one of the guys over at Sony, but this time, we had the meeting with Sony, the same guy who came for the Far From Home meeting back in early 2019, and a guy from Marvel. This time, they ordered like four sets for the film and another set for the new Spider-Man ride opening up at Disneyland. They were very secretive about this film and my colleague, who helped design the in-game sets, thinks they probably gave us fake things to make sets off of like they did with in-game. So this is a very specific leak that I don't think a lot of people would sit there and make up or even come up with. And if it's true, that's incredibly good news for us. That means Marvel Studios and Disney has a lot of control over Spider-Man No Way Home and Spider-Man moving forward. Now, this last leak that I'm about to mention, I'm going to go ahead and put a disclaimer out stating that I don't believe it, but it is rather interesting to think about, so I thought, why not just put the thought out there? Now, in case... For some random reason, this is true. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but it basically states that Loki is going to be playing a pretty decent part in Spider-Man No Way Home. This is because of the events that happen in the Loki series. Obviously, time travel is involved and some type of alternate timelines in the multiverse is involved in Loki and who knows how it's going to end. And the events probably are going to lead into Spider-Man No Way Home. However, I just don't think Loki is going to be in the movie. That is just too much at that point. But then again, there's so much in it. Why not just throw one more thing in there? And after all, Doctor Strange did say in Thor Ragnarok that he was monitoring Loki. And they have met, so maybe. There are definitely plenty of ways to make this work, and it could actually make sense. But to me, it's just so much in one movie that I'm really not counting on this. But like I said, we had a lot of Spider-Man No Way Home news and leaks today. So be sure to let me know what you think about all of this in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. Don't forget to like the video video, and for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.